people are still reeling from the violence in Virginia, including Reverend Tracy Blackman, who had a close call during a live interview on MSNBC. As we were closing down, uh, I've got to go, i got to go, i got to go. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what is happening here. I don't know what just happened there with our guest. Um, but uh, I, we are, we're going to try to find out what happened. Um, and she was standing at the location where it looks like now violence has broken out. Joining us via FaceTime from Cleveland is Reverend Tracy Blackman, Executive Minister of Justice and Witness Ministries, United Church of Christ. Reverend Blackman, first and foremost, um, what actually happened there when you were live uh, with Joanne Reed on MSNBC? Well, thank you for having me on this show, Roland. Joy had asked me to come on her show and provide it security because of the volatile nature of the area. And at that moment, we heard some pops. I heard pops in the background. I don't know if those were uh, gunshots or some other form of um, some other form of of distraction that the white nationalists were using. But the security she assigned to me uh, swept me off of the camera before I knew what was happening and took me into a safe area. So there was there was there, there was concern about security for your safety. Correct. Uh, now, on Friday night, I got a call from Reverend Dr. Barber, William J. Barber, uh, with regards to uh, those white supremacists marching in the University of Virginia. Uh, and he said you had reached out to him and that many folks there, religious leaders, were very concerned about their safety that night as well. And so uh, you, you, you had a very tense 24, 36 hours. Absolutely, Roland. And I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. So I've seen Klan marches before uh, to say that I had a tense weekend. Um, it's just an indication of how much this has escalated. Uh, and it's extremely unfortunate. On Friday night, we would gathered as people of multiple faiths, multiple races, um, to prepare ourselves for Saturday. It was not a protest, it was a worship service. And by the close of the service, we were unable to leave the church um, because there were hundreds of white supremacists, predominantly young men, uh, marching down the street in front of the church uh, in the park, carrying torches. And they were chanting, blood and soil, uh, you will not replace us. And then they were alternating that with Jews will not replace us and Black Lives Matter. Uh, so we were held hostage in the church and eventually forced to leave out of side doors and back doors. Uh, to escape the mob that was in the front. When you look at this uh, late reaction from President Trump, when you look at uh, folks who all of a sudden uh, who want to suggest that he somehow um, was doing the right thing and was speaking out against bigotry, uh, what's your response? Before you do that, I want to go ahead and play. This is what Vice President Mike Pence had to say uh, defending uh, Donald Trump. The president made it very clear in his statement this weekend that we condemn all forms of hate and violence Would it help and to particularly say again, condemn as as we did yesterday we condemn the the hate and the violence and the bigotry of organizations that showed up in Charlottesville like the KKK and white supremacists the president was clear on that and will continue to be clear but i think you'll also see this president call our country to move move beyond these these fractious times and come together around the values that we share. So, Tracy, when you hear Vice President Pence say, let's come together on shared values, again, had Trump done the right thing Saturday, this would not be an issue. I think that's one of the most hypocritical things I've heard this week, Roland. Uh, I blame the Trump administration and the GOP that preceded him and that are governing with him for the nature of violence in this country right now. They have made it a safe place to hate here. It didn't start with Donald Trump. It started with the eight years preceding him uh, when the GOP made a pact together to disrespect the first black president of the United States publicly and openly. Uh, not just his policies, uh, but they made a pact before he made policies that they would support nothing that he did. And they spent eight years preparing the ground for him to be disrespected and for uh, the tone of this nation to change in leadership. That made room for the election of a Donald Trump 
who ran on a platform of hatred. Uh, I question whether or not he actually made the additional statement yesterday because he had some clarity or whether he made that statement because David Duke, uh, one of the uh, ex-leaders of the Klan, but still very active, mm -hmm. called him out on social media, and therefore he had to do something to distance himself in a way that he had not before. Well, Tracy, we know also the, through reporting that Steve Bannon uh, and Stephen Miller encouraged him not to be too hard on the white supremacists on Saturday, saying they were a small but critically important part of his base. What does that say when you have literally uh, individuals who have uh, racial resentment feelings sitting right there in the White House at the right hand of the president advising him. It was it was Bannon leading Breitbart who said that Breitbart.com was the home of the alt-right, which we call white supremacist. Absolutely, Roland. And that, let's not forget that the young man who drove his car through that crowd when his mother was interviewed, what she said is very telling. She said, I didn't know he was at an alt-right rally. I thought he was at a Trump rally. That's very, very telling about the nature of this administration. Um, I think David Bannon is right. That is his base. It's the only part of his base that is growing. Uh, and he has cultivated this hatred that we see escalating. The, the most terrifying part to me, uh, as someone from the South, was the realization that the sheets have gone away, mm -hmm. the hoods have gone away. These young men who were marching with torches and who were uh, advancing this hateful rhetoric on Saturday once again were out in plain view. They were wearing polos and oxfords, and some of them had on Make America Great hats again. Uh, these are not people that feel they even need to hide anymore uh, the racial hatred that, yes, existed before Trump, but has been emboldened by this administration. He has made space in America for intolerance and hate, and that is unacceptable. Reverend Tracy, Tracy Blackman, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Let's go to our pound, Don Calloway, CEO of Pine Street Tragedies, Avis Jones, the Weaver, Leadership Tragedies, author, How Exceptional Black Women Lead, and also Brandon Cooper, the chairman, Prince George's County Republican Party. Brandon, I'll start with you. Trump has been whining, complaining how the media uh, is, was still criticizing him. He was late. He screwed up. Yeah, my grandma would say he was a day late and dollar short. Um, you mentioned earlier that this whole media narrative for the last 48 hours is one of his own creation. That's some of the pattern we've had this administration. Too often he shoots himself in the foot. There are many Republicans who came out on Saturday from a broad uh, ideological spectrum, from Ted Cruz, who called it what it was and called for it to be labeled as domestic terrorism, from Ronald McDaniel, chairman of the National Republican Party. But for some reason, Trump and his, I guess, staff in the White House could not speak to that same efficacy. And that's why we're here today. So you're 100% right. He was late on the comment. What he gave yesterday was a great speech. It should have happened 48 hours uh, earlier. Uh, Avis, when you, when you look at, again, uh, his reaction, when you look at uh, the white supremacists uh, who were elated that he did not slam them on Saturday, mm -hmm. this man has courted white supremacists. He has pushed the racial buttons. This, this is his base. He has hired them in his administration. Mm -hmm. When you look at Steve Bannon, Stephen Miller, Sebastian Gorka, Sam Clovis, this man is comfortable with bigots around around him and advising him. Let's just acknowledge that birds of a feather flock together, okay? Let's just call a spade a spade. If he is comfortable with these people around him, what does that say about him? We have a white supremacist in the White House at the highest level, I would argue, ocu ocu occupying the Oval Office. Let's just be clear about that. And I'm not very happy, quite frankly, with his speech. He sounded like he looked like somebody that was called to the principal's office. Clearly, he didn't want to be there. He was reading word for word. and There was no passion there. And you have to be very specific about his language in terms of how even the right are interpreting it. These right-wing people are interpreting his statements as still some sort of placation to them. His definition of racist is different from our definition of racist. Mm -hmm. There was analysis of his tweets on Twitter. He's five times more likely to call black people racist than he is to call white people racist. So they are still seeing daylight in his even revised statement that he's just as likely to go after Black Lives Matter, for example, than he is to go after the KKK. And we all know that that's the truth. Don? You know, I, I do a lot of other media, and I think it's important to quash this narrative that we're starting to see. 
there is no moral equivalency between Black Lives Matter and anti-racist protesters and the Nazis, which we saw in the streets of Charlottesville. This is not an opportunity to come out and say, and frankly, it's a rhetorical cowardice device to come out and say, well, this is a chance to decry violence from both the left and the right. No. What happened was Nazis killed a woman and are responsible but for the death of uh, two highway patrolmen. And, and I want to remind people, and again, this is why language matters, mm -hmm. why history matters. I want to remind people that the exact same people use the exact same language right. against Dr. Martin Luther King, right. SCLC, SNCC, right. CORE, NAACP, Urban League, accuse them of being aligned with communists, accuse them of being aligned with Nazis. Uh, and so anytime, anytime black folks have opposed right. white supremacy, anytime black people have demanded full freedom, they have been accused of being like Nazis. Of inciting and being like Nazis. I mean, there is nobody on the planet easier to call out, perhaps, uh, than Nazis. Nobody, maybe perhaps ISIS, right? That's that. Those two <laughs> exist on an <laughs> island together. Right. And the idea that you can't stoop to the lowest bar to call out those folks is is not only troubling, it's, it's a failure of moral leadership, it's a failure of practical leadership. Yeah. But I just want to put an end to this idea that this is time to call out violence on the left and the right. No, no, no. What happened is Nazis killed a woman in the street. That's what this is time to call out because that's the facts of what happened here. Folks, got to go to the break right now. Also, just for you know, the last two days, the last two days, I have specifically emailed the Trump administration to provide somebody to come on this show to talk about these issues. They said they were working on it. It hasn't happened. I'm going to send them an email every single day until they send somebody. And yes, Omar Rose is on that exact same email and so is Kellyanne Conway, and so is Hope Hicks, just so y'all know. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us, he wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no! no. That ain't gonna cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got a fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.